In a time before our world settled into its current form, there was a realm caught between reality and myth, a place where the boundaries of the known and unknown collided. This was the age of the Sphinx. In a vast desert of golden sands, there stood a solitary limestone plateau. Atop this plateau was the great city of Isat, a marvel of ancient architecture with towering obelisks and majestic pyramids. The people of Isat were proud, skilled in the arts and sciences, and lived in harmony with the gods. Their greatest achievement, however, was yet to be realized. To the east of Isat, beyond the horizon, there lay a great forest. Within this forest was a creature of unparalleled enigma, the Sphinx. Neither fully lion nor human, the Sphinx had the body of a majestic lion and the face of a beautiful woman. Her eyes, deep and mysterious, held the secrets of the universe. It was said that those who looked into them could glimpse their own destiny. Though she resided in the forest, the Sphinx's presence was felt throughout the land. On moonlit nights, her haunting voice echoed through the trees, singing songs of ancient times and lost civilizations. Those who ventured into the forest and managed to find the Sphinx would often be presented with a riddle. Answer correctly, and they would be granted wisdom and insight. Fail, and they would be lost to the forest forever, their souls trapped in an eternal quest for the answer. Rumors of the Sphinx's riddles reached the ears of the pharaoh of Isat, a young and ambitious ruler named Akin. Intrigued by the stories, Akin became obsessed with meeting the Sphinx and unlocking the secrets she held. He believed that by solving her riddles, he could gain the knowledge to make Isat the greatest city the world had ever known. Gathering a group of his bravest warriors, scholars, and priests, Akin set out on a perilous journey to the forest. The desert, with its blistering heat and treacherous sands, was a formidable opponent. Many turned back, unable to withstand the challenges, but Akin pressed on, his desire to meet the Sphinx driving him forward. After what felt like an eternity, the group reached the edge of the forest. The dense canopy above provided a welcome respite from the scorching sun, and the air was thick with the scent of pine and earth. As they ventured deeper, the world around them seemed to shift and change. Trees whispered secrets, shadows danced, and time lost its meaning. For days they wandered, their path dictated by the whims of the forest. Just when hope was beginning to wane, a soft melody reached their ears. The haunting voice of the Sphinx guided them through the trees until they stood before her. In awe, the group gazed upon the majestic creature. Her lion's body, powerful yet graceful, was in stark contrast to her serene, human face. Her eyes, deep pools of knowledge, seemed to pierce through their very souls. You see cancers, pharaoh of Isat, the Sphinx in tone, her voice echoing through the clearing. Akin, gathering his courage, stepped forward. Great Sphinx, I have come to unlock the secrets you hold. Grant me a riddle, and I shall prove myself worthy. A slight smile played on the Sphinx's lips. Very well, she began, answer me this, I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Akin pondered the riddle, his mind racing. Around him, his scholars whispered and debated, but the Sphinx's gaze never wavered from the young pharaoh. Hours turned into days as Akin wrestled with the riddle. The weight of his kingdom and the expectations of his people bore down on him. And as the days stretched on, the forest began to close in, its shadows deepening and the whispers growing louder. Just as despair was beginning to take hold, a realization dawned upon Akin. With newfound confidence, he approached the Sphinx and declared, You are a thought. The Sphinx's eyes twinkled with amusement and respect. Correct, young Pharaoh. But remember, while thoughts are powerful, they are also fleeting. Cherish them, for they shape your destiny. With the riddle solved, the forest's enchantment lifted, revealing a clear path back to Isat. Akin and his group returned as heroes, their tale of the Sphinx becoming legendary. However, the story was far from over. For while Akin had unlocked one secret of the Sphinx, many more remained. And as the years went by, the Sphinx's influence on the land of Isid would grow, leading to events no one could have foreseen. The city of Isid flourished under Pharaoh Akin's reign. With the wisdom imparted by the Sphinx's riddle, Akin introduced groundbreaking reforms and innovations. Aqueducts carried water to the thirstiest parts of the city, lush gardens blossomed in places that were once barren and scholars flocked to Isid from distant lands to partake in its newfound enlightenment. But as the city reached the zenith of its glory, whispers began to spread about a new riddle from the Sphinx, one that promised not just wisdom but power beyond imagination. Many sought the Sphinx in hopes of deciphering this new riddle, but few returned, and those who did were changed, speaking in riddles themselves, their minds seemingly ensnared by the very power they sought. It wasn't long before Akin heard of this second riddle. 
Though he had reaped the rewards of the first riddle, the allure of even greater power was too strong to resist. Against the counsel of his advisors, Akin embarked on another journey to the forest, driven by a mix of ambition and pride. But the forest was not as it had been before. It seemed wilder, more unpredictable. Where once there were whispers, now there were screams. Shadows no longer danced but lurked, watching silently. The very air felt charged with a palpable tension. After many days, Akin once again stood before the Sphinx. Yet she too seemed different. Her eyes, once deep and mysterious, now burned with an intensity that made even the brave Pharaoh falter. You return, Pharaoh of Isat, the Sphinx rumbled, her voice echoing with a power that made the earth tremble. I seek the second riddle, Akin declared, trying to mask the tremor in his voice. The Sphinx regarded him for a long moment before finally intoning, very well. But be warned, this riddle holds power that can either uplift a kingdom or cast it into oblivion. Listen closely, it can't be held but can be felt, can't be seen but its effects are clear. It can warm, or it can chill. It can build up, or it can tear down. What is it? Days turned into weeks as Akin grappled with the riddle. The forest around him seemed to grow darker, the days shorter, and the nights filled with strange and haunting visions. His previous confidence waned, replaced by a gnawing doubt. One evening, as he sat alone, a gentle breeze swept through the clearing. It stirred the embers of his dying campfire, bringing warmth to his cold limbs. In that moment, clarity struck Akin like a bolt of lightning. With a rush of exhilaration, he approached the Sphinx. The answer is emotion, he declared. It cannot be held or seen, but it is felt by all. It has the power to warm our hearts or send chills down our spine. Emotions can inspire us to great deeds or lead us to our own downfall. The Sphinx's intense gaze softened, and for a brief moment, the fierce creature seemed almost human. Correct, Pharaoh. Emotions are the true driving force behind every action. But unchecked, they can lead to ruin. Harness them, and they can make you invincible. Let them control you, and they can be your undoing. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Akin returned to Isat. But the city he came back to was not the same. In his absence, greed and envy had taken root, with factions vying for control. The unity that had once been Isid's strength was now its greatest weakness. Using the wisdom from the Sphinx's second riddle, Akin worked tirelessly to restore balance and harmony to his city. He introduced festivals that celebrated the full spectrum of human emotion, from joy and love to sadness and reflection. Through art, music, and storytelling, the people of Isid were taught to embrace their emotions, to understand them, and to harness their power for the greater good. But even as peace returned to Isid, a shadow loomed on the horizon. Rumors of a third and final riddle from the Sphinx began to spread, one that held the key to life and death itself. Years passed, and the golden city of Isid stood as a beacon of culture and enlightenment. The lessons from the Sphinx's riddles had shaped its destiny, making it the envy of distant lands. Yet, amidst the prosperity, an undercurrent of anticipation and unease persisted. The rumored third riddle, said to be the Sphinx's most profound mystery, weighed heavy on the collective consciousness. Elders spoke of it in hushed tones while children speculated wildly in the city's squares. It was said that deciphering this riddle would grant dominion over life and death itself. As the years went by, Akin, no longer the young, ambitious pharaoh but a wise and seasoned ruler, felt the weight of mortality bearing down upon him. The promise of the third riddle's power became irresistible. With a heavy heart and a retinue of his most trusted advisors, he embarked on his final pilgrimage to the heart of the enigmatic forest. The forest, sensing the gravitas of their quest, seemed to part before them, its previous malevolence subdued. When Akin stood before the Sphinx this time, he found her surrounded by an ethereal glow, her eyes filled not with fiery intensity but a profound sadness. You seek the final riddle, wise pharaoh, the Sphinx in tone, her voice echoing with the weight of eons. Akin nodded. I have unraveled your mysteries before, great Sphinx. I am ready for whatever you offer. The Sphinx's gaze penetrated deep into Akin's soul. Very well she began. This is the riddle that binds all of creation, I am the end of every beginning, the shadow that chases the light. Inevitable and impartial, I come for all, be it day or night. What am I? As days melted into nights, Akin found himself grappling not just with the riddle but with the entirety of his existence. He reflected on his life, his achievements, his regrets, and the inevitable fate that awaited him. On the seventh night, with the crescent moon casting a silvery sheen over the forest, Akin approached the Sphinx, his demeanor calm and resolute. The answer, he whispered, is death. A melancholic silence enveloped the clearing. 
The Sphinx nodded slowly. Death is the great equalizer, the inevitable end to every journey. But in understanding and accepting it, you find the true meaning of life. Tears glistened in Akin's eyes as a profound realization dawned upon him. By fearing death, we chain ourselves, forgetting to truly live. But by embracing it, we free ourselves to cherish every fleeting moment. The Sphinx, her task complete, began to fade, her form dissipating into the ethereal glow that surrounded her. Your journey, great pharaoh, is now your own. Remember the lessons of the riddles and lead your people with wisdom and love. I can return to Isid with no grand tales or triumphant revelations, only a profound understanding of life and its ephemeral nature. Under his guidance, Isa transformed once more, becoming a city where life was celebrated in all its fleeting beauty. Festivals, art, and music took on a deeper resonance, echoing the transient nature of existence. And as the sands of time flowed, the legend of the Sphinx became an integral part of Isid's culture, a reminder of the eternal dance between life and death, knowledge and mystery. Many years later, as an old Akin took his last breath, he did so with a smile, knowing he had truly lived. And in the annals of time, the golden city of Isid and its wise pharaoh became a testament to the power of understanding, acceptance, and the indomitable human spirit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more stories. Until next time, take care and keep watching.